Hi there, welcome to a new model, machine learning monitoring for unstructured data, natural language processing, large language models, and embeddings. In this module, we will cover how to evaluate and monitor the production performance for models which use unstructured data, particularly text, including large language model-based systems. We will cover why monitoring unstructured data is difficult in the first place, how to measure text data quality, what are text descriptors and how to use them, how to deal with embeddings and how to deal with multimodal data. So we are going to cover a lot. This module includes both a theoretical part and a code practice. At the end of this module, you will have an understanding of how to build monitoring for models which uses unstructured data. Let me start from the introduction to natural language processing and large language models monitoring. I would like to begin with some use cases which are widely used nowadays. First of all, we have a lot of predictive applications. For example, some classification problem statements like email spam detection or classification for support tickets for help centers, some evaluation of text sentiment and many, many more. We also have quite a lot of ranking statements like e-commerce website search or content recommendations and all those applications might use unstructured data, text for example. Here is also information extraction like unstructured, structured data from raw texts like for example places, dates or specific names. However, together with predictive applications, nowadays we have quite a lot of generative applications as well, which are translation or summarization where we create a short summary out of a huge article, for example. Here are also some text generation things like conversational interfaces like chatbots or article generation, even code generation. I believe a lot of engineers already benefit from it. So we do really have a lot of production systems and we need to know what can possibly go wrong with such systems in order to prepare to monitor them. And let me start from kind of standard issues, which we already discussed for tabular data. Here are some data sources issues or technical errors with processing data. For example, it can be wrong encoding or maybe some unexpected language, data processing bugs and etc. It also can be data shifts, like for example, new topics which we never seen before during training, some unexpected usage scenarios and many, many more. However, together with these standard issues like technical errors and data shifts, which we discussed heavily for structured data, here can be some specifics. For example, model attacks like prompt ejection or some adversarial usage. If you rely on some third-party models which were trained externally, we can face things like changing in the properties of external model, for example, after retraining or maybe after some changing in the model's output as well. We also can face some hallucination problems, for example, when our model generates some factually incorrect or unrelated answers. So there are quite a lot of things. Well, what exactly can we monitor with respect to these issues? There are two groups of signals which make sense to monitor. First are direct signals and the second is proxy metrics. So uh, when it comes to direct signals, we need to monitor something which relates to the quality of our model. For example, accuracy, precision, recall, it's all standard metrics, but they require some labeling. When it comes to proxy metrics, you can monitor for related to the model property things like data quality, prediction and data drift, and user's feedback. Let's discuss it in the details because it's quite interesting. So when it comes to direct model evaluation, if you deal with some predictive applications like classification, ranking or data instruction, we can assume that there is a right answer or something close to it. And this is why we can actually come up with the right labels and calculate any quality metric which compares model's output with the labels. However, when it comes to generative applications like translation, text summarization or text generation, there is no single right answer. Probably we can say that there are a lot of good ones and we cannot really rely on the labeling and standard quality metrics. 
Here you can use some feedback, like maybe human labeling or large language model-based grading, some response validation, for example, correct JSON of the output or working code, etc., as a proxy signals. And we can build our grading based on those proxy signals. We are going to discuss it in more details a bit, little bit later. Now let's move to some proxy strategies for unstructured data. I'm going to use text as the primary type of unstructured data, however, quite a lot of the techniques you can reuse for other types of unstructured data, for example, for videos or pictures, etc. So, first of all, if you have raw data, raw text, you are very lucky because you can use quite a lot of analytical methods that can process raw text. That's very nice because it helps you to get some interpretable signal and come up with some hypothesis for future debugging. So having raw data is always a good advantage. Second strategy is to monitor for text descriptors. This is the idea that we can extract some signals from the raw data and then compute metrics on top of those structured signals. And finally, quite often we don't really have an access to our raw data, but we have an access to the embeddings, which we feed to some analytical processes, including machine learning models. So here we also can detect some changes in the distributions of input embeddings and the output ones, if you have such. So there are quite a lot of different strategies. Basically, the idea is that we want to build a monitoring dashboard very similar to what you generally build for structured data, but it will include the other panels and other statistics. For example, we can monitor for things like um, text quality, percentage of out of vocabulary words, or we can monitor the percentage of non letter characters, share of non empty text, and etc. So let's discuss it deeper, and in the next video we are going to discuss detecting raw text data drift.